10 photography non-essentials that are essential on a wildlife photography trip coming up. Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for visiting. I know it's been a while since I've posted a video, but that now that you're here, uh, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you're always notified whenever I post new content. So it's now, you know, post COVID and yeah, COVID hasn't gone away, but people are moving out a lot more now and people are getting back into uh, the rhythm of going on wildlife photography tours and uh, this was something that I posted on my Instagram uh, feed a while ago and uh, a lot of people you know resonated with this and I decided that it would be a good idea to make a video about this so this is my top 10 non-essential essentials on a wildlife photography trip get yourself an amazing hat so this is by a South African company called Rogue Outdoor, and this is uh, their model called the Airhead 304. Uh, please note that any of the products that I'm talking about, which I'm using, are purely my own choice. I'm not sponsored by any of these channels. No one has reached out to me. This is just my gear, and um, because I really love what I'm using, I'm talking about it. But however, if you are from any of these channels and you like the fact that I'm plugging you again, you'd like to reach out, hey, I'm right here. So, yep, this is a pretty awesome hat. And what I really love about it is that it's light. Uh, obviously, it's quite bendy and flexible, which is what you would need on a safari. And uh, you can see all these holes for ventilation. Yeah. So that's why it's called the Airhead. And it's really... Uh, something that I, I love wearing, whether it's in Africa or whether it's in India, whether it's um, really hot. But remember sometimes you're on safari and it's not necessarily hot, but it's just the angle of the sun. And it can be really irritating if you don't have some kind of uh, cover above your head. And uh, this for me ticks all the boxes. Number two is a uh, pair of cycling glasses. Now, these are clear. I also have a similar pair um, that are tinted or that are basically sunglasses. So why cycling glasses? The reason is this, is that these really wrap around. And this is critical for me when I am out on safari in the mornings and you're driving through and it's quite cool and your eyes start to tear up because it's, you, you know, your eyes haven't yet got used to uh, the conditions yet. And the last thing that I want when I'm driving through on safari is coming across an animal and instead of being able to pick up my camera and look through and make images, I'm busy wiping away the tears or you know, any sort of dust that might get into my eyes. So rather than regular sunglasses, the bicycle glasses wrap around and they're really light. And this is from Decathlon and I'll put a link to this below. This is a really inexpensive pair and you may even see that these have been scuffed a bit uh, so it doesn't really matter to me because after maybe a year or so, I might just ditch these and get another pair. They're really inexpensive and really, really worth it, especially in the early hours of the morning, whether it's Africa, whether it's India. When you're driving out on safari and you have that breeze hitting your face and you're squinting and tearing up, this is going to make all the difference. Number three buffs now this is uh, a brand called quechua this is by decathlon as well uh, really thin very light and um, the best thing about buffs are that you know they're really quick to to wear you can put them around your neck and it's a, you're good to go so it's it's excellent as a means of um, protecting you from dust uh, also when Maybe if you're sitting in a hide and you don't want to be uh, exposed to the animal, this is really good. This is another 
uh, puff that I've used of late. It's by a small startup in India called Wild Pines. And uh, this is 100% cotton. And why I like this is though it's thicker, is that one, because it's 100% cotton, I could soak this with water and in summer, when you have something that's soaked in water and then you wear it around your neck, it really helps keep you cool. The third is a very generic, and you can get this on Amazon. I think uh, this is something that they use in the Middle East. I think it's called a shamar. And while you could wrap this around yourself, what you can also do is when you have really dusty conditions and you've got your lens, your lens or your camera gear on your seat next to you, all I do is I open this up and it goes from being a cover for myself to being a cover for my gear. So I don't have to fish them out of a bag. I just throw this aside, pick up my gear shoe, put it down. This is great to wipe, to wipe uh, my gear down, wipe off all the dust as well. Another very important piece of equipment. It's not essential, at least if somebody in the group has it, but I usually find that everybody thinks somebody's going to bring one and then invariably nobody brings one is a really good pair of binoculars. And this makes a world of difference. I've had this for about seven years now. This is a Nikon Pro Staff 7. Uh, it's a brilliant pair of binoculars. And um, this can make all the difference between you spotting action far away and getting there quickly or getting there first, uh, you know, if there's gonna be a convoy of vehicles, as opposed to you watching somebody else pick up the binoculars, spot uh, the action, and then end up following them. So always carry a good pair of binoculars. Don't, don't, pick, don't pack a small pair because that's really not gonna make uh, you know, any sort of a difference to you. You need a good pair of binoculars. And uh, in, you know, I wouldn't necessarily rate where the Nikon Pro Stuff 7 is compared to something else. That's not my, my goal here. My goal is to just talk about the fact that you need a good pair of binoculars and for me uh, these have been excellent. A poncho. Now you might be thinking that you know it's summer and you're driving out and there's no question of rain. You never know when it might rain down. So this is some, look this pack's really thin. This goes into my backpack and the beauty for poncho is you just open it up slip it over your head and you're done. You don't have to zip stuff up, number one. Number two, invariably what I do with my poncho is that I open it and I immediately cover my gear with it on the seat. My gear's on the seat. I've got my cameras, uh, one and two, with my lenses. And rather than pick them up and then try to stuff them in the bag or anything like that, out comes the poncho. Less than 10 seconds, I've got my gear covered. The poncho can really make a world of difference. Again, these are available uh, online. Uh, I picked this up uh, at Amazon. It's a really good piece of kit. Another piece of kit that I really wear all the time, and if you've noticed, I'm wearing it now, is this uh, Gillette by Quechua, uh, also from, um, um, from Decathlon. And I use this not only when I'm on safari, even when I'm traveling. When I'm going back by a flight, I wear this. So the reason why I do this is multifold. One, I, I can keep my phone, and I, I've got my, I'm recording my phone right now. Um, say I'm on an international flight. Passport is handy right there. I don't have to look through my bag. I don't have to take my backpack out. I, I've got multiple pockets, right? I've got large pockets here that I can put a wide angle lens in, so I don't need to fish in the bag. So this is really light, and if it gets warm, I just take it off. So it's a really, really cool thing to have um, because it gives me so many options to keep stuff on me that I don't have to search through my bag for. Another essential, non-essential that you would need. Oh, it's non-essential because you don't need it every time, but it, it's essential because when you need it, uh, you do not want to be looking around and asking for other people for help, is a multi-tool. In this case, this is a, a Victorinox a Swiss Army knife, but it's got, it's not just for the knife, it's got a saw, it's got um, a Phillips head screwdriver, it's got bottle openers. 
it's stuff like this that you would need in a in a pinch to tighten a screw on your uh, on your uh, lens collar. Maybe the foot's a little loose or anything like that. And um, so that happened to me just um, a few weeks ago when I was in pinch and there was a vehicle next to me when we had stopped at the breakfast stop. And that gentleman was looking around for a multi-tool and he didn't have one. Uh, and nobody had one in, in that vehicle. So I was able to help him because I had this. And it was just a simple question of him being able to tighten something and it made all the difference to him being able to continue and enjoy a successful safari. So always carry a multi-tool. But don't make the mistake I made the last time. So that time I had a different multi-tool with me. I had a Leatherman Skeletool and I forgot to pack it away. Went to the airport and it was on my person and was confiscated by security. So I really missed that that uh, Leatherman Skeletool, but I always have a backup and this was in my bag. Um, so yes, never forget to take it out and put it back in your check-in luggage. So you're on safari, especially when it's winter. What's the most common thing that happens in winter when you've spent hours out of the park for a couple of days? Chap lips. Please always carry a small little tube of lip balm, or in this case, I've got Vaseline. It makes a world of difference, especially if you're not used to that kind of weather. And now I'm from Chennai, which is humid, and hot down south and then I go up north or I go to Africa and then after a couple of days because of the dryness in the air it dries the lips out and then the lips crack and it can be really annoying and painful sometimes so non essential essential a lip balm can you see it goes into the chili right there don't have to worry about it all non essential stuff in the chili Another essential bracket that you should always carry with you is sunscreen. Um, we tend to not pay as much attention to sunscreen uh, as we should. And uh, what happens especially uh, when we're preparing for safaris in the morning, we tend to forget. So I always keep one of these in my pocket. So even if I did forget when I drive out, uh, whenever I remember, I have the opportunity to use it. So this is a Neutrogena, but whichever brand, whichever one you think, you know, suits you best or your skin tone or condition or whatever it is. But always carry sunscreen. Your skin will thank you for it. My last non-essential essential is a good torch. And I like this by Four Class, uh, also bought it at Decathlon. And uh, I'll put a link to this one below as well. So why do you need these? Because invariably you're leaving, when you leave early morning, you're leaving before sunrise. And if you're at a camp or at a lodge where you're walking through the brush, you really need to be able to see where you're going. Maybe you're zipping up the tent. You wanna make sure that you've not left anything. Um, so to have, uh, a head torch and I prefer a head torch rather than a hand torch for the simple reason that once I put this on my head my hands are free to carry my stuff right? and the last thing I want to do is to carry this by hand and then be juggling stuff and the good thing with this is that this has three modes so whenever I need extra brightness this is always I can choose to uh, brighten uh, to increase the brightness and this is powered so I can take this little unit out at the back and plug it in through a USB cable and charge it so I don't need batteries for these so that's why I really love this and uh, um, a really important bit of kit also when you're coming back from camp you stayed out you've come back it's dark you're walking especially in, in, in some of these places in Africa where you're staying in camps and you're walking through uh, you know what's essentially the wilderness and walking to your camp the last thing you want is a you know some sort of a snake or any sort of a creepy crawly or anything to cross your path 
when you've got this on, you know exactly what you're doing. And if you've got this on your head, wherever you're looking, you've got a light source. So great bit of kit to have. So folks, that was my list of my top 10 photography non-essential essentials. If there's anything else that you guys think uh, I should have added to the list, please feel free to let me know, add them in the comments below. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and uh, let me know what you think about it. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Until then, may the focus be with you.